New York State has many undisturbed old forests in places where human activity has had minimal impact over the centuries. Here, among the high peaks of the Adirondack Mountains, some high-altitude plant communities have been spared by their relative inaccessibility and inhospitable climate. like dwarf cedars and hardwoods that have clung to rock faces of the Niagara Escarpment for centuries. These small pines, spruces, and firs may be nearly as old and certainly just as hardy. The air temperature atop Whiteface Mountain on this July day is a relatively cool and dry 63 degrees Fahrenheit at noon. The air temperature at Lake Placid just a few miles away, but 3,000 feet lower in elevation, is a very humid 86. This dark-eyed junco is a common sight in New York State during the bleakest days of midwinter, flitting about backyard feeders. The junco is rarely seen in New York in summer, except here, among the high peaks, where the air is chilly year-round. This is one of the region's few alpine environments, home to many rare plants that somehow survive against all odds on this exposed granite outcrop. Alpine environments are found above the tree line where cold temperatures and a lack of adequate soil, moisture and nutrients make it nearly impossible for most plants to survive. Mountain sand wart, a showy wildflower, grows wild on the tundra far to the north but never below the tree line sand port, thrives in crevices and on stone ledges where soil is extremely thin and of such marginal quality that competition for it from other plants is nearly non-existent. Just a few hundred feet down the mountain, blue gentian springs up from coarse gravel outwash near mountain streams. Rare ferns and mosses line these streams, fed by the thin overmat of soil that underlies this extensive mountainside spruce and cedar forest. Geologists have debated whether the vertical height of the Laurentide ice sheet reached this elevation. Many believe it did. One telltale sign of ice movement is striation gouges and rock surfaces that resulted from ice encased boulders and other materials scraping against these granite surfaces as glaciers advanced and retreated time and again. There appear to be striations on outcrops here at the very top of Whiteface Mountain. There is no question the ice sheet had a major impact on the current size and shape of Whiteface. This mountain is a classic example of how repeated advancing and retreating of glaciers gouge stone mountainsides over time, creating predictable geological patterns found in mountain ranges the world over. Glaciers are typically extensions or lobes of more expansive ice sheets pushed and pulled along by the weight of the greater ice mass. This action eventually carved out bowl-shaped amphitheaters called cirques Whiteface has three steep-walled cirques along its sides. In early September 1979, this forest mat was suddenly and catastrophically saturated during an unusually violent downpour. Untold volumes of water drained toward the center of the cirque, much as highway runoff collects in low spots and follows the path of least resistance into storm drains. The center core of the mat abruptly lifted by a surge of rainwater, separated from the rock face and slid down the mountainside. The scar is still visible, and it may be thousands of years before enough soil accumulates to restore the forest to its previous state. At the edges of each cirque, arets, heaps of boulders and stone fragments dislodged and piled high by the glaciers, then left in place as the ice retreated. This image of Whiteface Mountain in winter 
is a dramatic illustration of the Cirque Arete phenomenon. Highlighted by the tight arc of Whiteface Mountain Parkway near the base of the Summit Trail. This is a familiar scene, not only in the Adirondacks, but also along Canada's Laurentian Mountain Range, Europe's Alps, the Himalayas of Asia, and the Andes Mountains of South America. <laughs> 